Adrenaline in my soul, every thought out of control. It's VGC, the video game podcast with me, Jordan Midler, and Chris Scullion. This week, Ronins are rising and we're alone in the dark. But first, Chris, what did you get for Asda? Funny you should ask, mm. Jordan. I'm going to drop a surprise double review. Oh, here we go. A, li- a double live review. In one of those, uh, one of those Twitter here. accounts with like 200,000 followers that always clips up MGF Grub. Can you get ready for this? Because this is going to be your next here one. Here it comes. Here it comes. So today, live on the VGC podcast, oh. I am reviewing limited edition Raspberry yes. Ripple flavor. I am Brew Extra and Wildberry Slush. Wow. I am Brew Extra. Now, I um have not tried either mm-hmm. of these i literally got back from as i'm sure other convenience stores are, are supplying it um for those not aware i'm very much an iron brew yep. man um but i've the flavors uh, i kind of I'm, I'm hot and cold on them um the, the fiery iron brew from a number of years ago was the best in my opinion that was um, nice when they go, really burned your throat yeah, but, about the fucking about mm, the old cinnamon right in there makes you feel alive makes you feel like a yeah. man Remind you, you've got a pulse. <laughs> um, but, but but this kind of I don't like when they go novelty with raspberry ripple and stuff yeah. like that. They did an ice cream one, which was honking. So I'm imagine this. We'll try that first. We'll, so we're trying the raspberry ripple. I'm mm-hmm. um, brew. And this is um, today's it. launch day. Chris was at Asda from uh, four o'clock this morning. <laughs> I was, I don't know. Had my my tent and everything. <laughs> okay, we're going in for the first drink. He, oh, he's, he's drinking a lot of this. That's the can fucking finish now. How are we feeling? Do you know what it tastes what? like? That's actually not bad. It tastes like drumsticks. The oh, the, the confectionery. That is a. That's basically that's basically drumsticks flavored. That is an incredible uh, endorsement, especially because and there's and there's no and there's no iron brew aftertaste. Sometimes they think they taste like something, and then the, the iron brew kicks yeah. in. This is this is drumsticks all the way down. Baby. They taste like you, <laughs> when you were a kid, and you would just mix like five different diluting juices and and see how they tasted. Um, but drumsticks. Mm. I used to. Do you remember the? I can't remember the brand of drumsticks and like um it's called like sweet treats or something stupid like that. The one that has Parma mm. violets, all your favourites. Oh yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. get a big bag of those. My dad would get them. The, from... the swizzles, yes, the swizzles mix. Exactly. Yeah. You would maybe get one dib dab in there, but those were like that was a high ticket item, so you wouldn't get as many Aye. of those as you'd, you'd get Parma violets at your neck. But my dad would get Aye. a big bag of those on a Friday when he would do the big shop. And the drumsticks were the first to be gone. Because Drums, drumsticks and refreshers. Oh, yeah. That's the refreshers yeah, again, a high value item. You'd only get one or two of those because I mean, the refreshers mm. are pretty, pretty serious, especially when you used to get the long ones. Um, mm. I know we're in uh, yeah, remember Opal right. Fruits territory here, but <laughs> I, I'm, I guarantee that my two front teeth have been pushed forward by getting a drumstick, putting the whole thing in my mouth, and anchoring my teeth to the bottom of the the, the stick and just pulling it. So you've just get one yeah. big bit of drumstick in your mouth. It was it was a Dennis the Menace, uh, not a Dennis the Menace. Sorry, the Desperate Dan Bar in my oh. era. That was the the, the, the gold the golden ticket, the big orange slab of uh, just pure sugar. Pure sugar. The, the Iron amazing. Blue Bars again, um, amazing stuff. I think we might have talked about this in the podcast or in one of the five hundred podcasts I do every week. But when approached by Bar about uh, remaking the the Iron Blue Bars, apparently they have lost the original recipe. And it's devastating. They no longer have the license from, uh, from, uh, like whoever the no oh, Cowens, yeah, I think it was the the, the company be. that made them. It's just, so I think you can still get like Iron Brew flavored bar, but it's just it's mm. generic. It's crap. It's it's, it's when they spell it I R O N B R E W, like Iron yeah. Brew, the fake stuff. Well, I'm going to quickly go for the Wildberry yep. Slush as well. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I believe. Uh, in Canada, according to my wife, they call this double fisting. Um, I'm not sure if that's a term. <laughs> Canadians here, but I, I, love to double fist. They love it. They love it. So this is the wild Some berry slush, crap. which this, I'm experienced. He's going for it again. The wild berry slush, when I'm like a dark kind of dark fruits coloured uh, can. How are we feeling about it? That's not as impressive. No. It tastes like. Again, oh, he's going for more. Taking this very seriously. Um, it tastes like something, but I can't think what. Some other kind of berry type drink, but I can't really think of it. Mm. So it tastes like something. I don't. I don't like it. It's, it's, it's got a kind of black currenty flavor, um, which I'm not a massive fan of. Uh, it's very, definitely the raspberry ripple is the 
the winner. If you if you um, were to so rank you the four of these like summer flavors, how would you feel about it? What were the other? T- oh, like based on, uh, as well as the ice cream and the summer yeah. fruits one they did. I put raspberry ripple top. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's a big gap because uh, there's the rest. The other three I wasn't massively impressed by. Raspberry ripple top, big gap, summer fruits, ice cream, wild berry slush. Okay, I think that's that's an official ranking. Um, Iron Brew, if you want uh, quotes for your cans, just reach out and we'll we'll sort that <laughs> out. They're still trying to pedal those energy drink Iron Brews. Um, I don't think oh, you're not seeing all four of them lined up as much, but you still see one or two. So I don't know if that's been a quiet discontinuation. Um, yeah, they're poor. I'm currently drinking a Monster Reserve uh, White Pineapple. Um, I like the reserve <laughs> to make it sound make it sound like they've cracked out in some cask. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, like, it's, a- it's aged 300 years um, <laughs> then it, there's a rind on top of it but that's just part of the flavour it's, it's aged 12 years like it's audience <laughs> this is a description from the can no juice, tea, coffee or any tweaks to the Monster Energy blend Monster Reserve is straight up original Monster in new amazing flavours it's well, that's, that, that, that's tweaked yeah. then it's, it's literally, I mean, the original monster doesn't taste like white pineapple, so that's, there's a tweak for you. It's the ideal combo of the right ingredients and the right proportions to get the job done like only monster can. Um, they describe it as intense but smooth, easy drinking, white, parentheses, sugar loaf, pineapple flavour. Um, and this is what it's for. Uh, athletes, musicians, anarchists, this, this is an Antifa drink, mm. students, road warriors, <laughs> Ooh, what oh. a rush! As apparently well, one of them's one of them's dead. So they, like, they're, they're not both half, dead. Half there. Are they both dead? I don't now? know. As, as, I mean, I think animal died first. No, hawk he? died first. Hawk, hawk, hawk's Did long he? gone. Yeah, because animal is him. John Laurinaitis's brother. Um, That's right. So, uh, hmm. Animal oh, well. in for for years and years, animal was still holding on to the. Oh, road warrior animal, animal died forty years ago. He's well gone. Was uh, he? 2020. Oh, okay. I think the Hello. I think the the woke COVID mind virus got him. God rest him. Well, and and Hawk's gone as well. Yeah, Hawk is long gone. Hawk, Hawk went ages ago. Yeah. I well, God rest the pain. Yeah. There was always a... well, Paul El- Paul Ellering still on the go because he was our manager for still a week. Still kicking a boss. Though <laughs> I'm a, I'm such an idiot. In order to find <laughs> Road Warrior Hawk, I just googled Animal Hawk, and of course the results are the bird, <laughs> the Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah paul ellering he's still he's managing on television at the moment is he not he's the manager of is that he, uh, is he on is he on the other show i think he's no no he's on he's back with wwe i think he's um managing carrying crosses faction at the moment is he on nxt i don't, I don't watch nxt I, I i genuinely couldn't tell you but how the, the most important part of this video game podcast is finding out when and how hawk died um so <laughs> Um, we apologize for those waiting for video game news it's coming it's, it's not it's, 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 it's really not this is all we're talking about this week is the road warriors mind when heidenreich was in the road warriors anyway uh <laughs> yeah i refuse I, I actually refuse to call them the road warriors even though that's what they're better known as i, I they'll always be legion in, in my heart such a cool look um hawk mm. died in 2003 uh apparently was it barbiturates I don't know, but it was a heart attack, so you've got to imagine what what, what the nose candy those lads were shoving up there mm. during the glory days. Certainly wasn't refreshers. Yeah, certainly wasn't. Anyway, what were we talking about? Video games! <laughs> <laughs> Chris Gullion, are you ready for a professional PlayStation 5? I'm pumped for... I'm, I'm sick of this amateur yeah. one I've got. This, this semi-pro PS5. Um, I hate this I'm PlayStation 5 that's... Uh, filmed POV with a shaky cam. I want lights <laughs> and I want a steady three camera setup. You know, um, definitely. The the rumor mill is a swirling swirling that a PS5 Pro is coming out this year. Digital Foundry's been chatting about it, um, saying that it'll be able to upscale 1080p games to 4K, which is something that developers can easily add to their games with a little patch. Chris Gillian, what's the point of this? Um. What was the point of the last one? It's just, it's just, it's just to kind of to get the, the tech nerds excited Enthusiasts. about something like. Well, th- sorry, that's what I meant. Sorry, <laughs> I, I forgot to c- consult my thesaurus. Um, I'll get them excited for something mid-generation. Mm. 
Um, so that they'll have a switch situation where people go, oh, the switch is aging hardware now. Not, not the P- it's, it's a weird this PS5 one because it's only kind of fairly recently stock has been readily available, yeah. and already it's becoming slightly obsolete. And they're saying, oh, okay, now we'll move on to the PS5 Pro. Um, I'll still get it because I'm like a nerd for this kind of stuff, but um, it feels less needed than than in previous generations. I would yeah, say. especially considering like when the PS4 came out, that was already dated hardware, so you kind of needed to get to a Pro for a new generation. But like, yeah, PS5 is still running, is still running hot stuff. There's obviously disparity. So Dragon's Dogma Two out this week. By the way, point of order. There's a review cast you can go and listen to with uh, me, Alex Donaldson, and Jade King. But that game is very intense and like barely hits 30 in some places on ps5 mm. and and a few reviews it's like there's no pc on the market that can make it hit 60 all the time so there is a bit of disparity but games can still look amazing and on ps5 and xbox series um so if this comes out this november let's say that would be four years since the launch of the playstation 5 the playstation 4 pro came out three years after the launch of the playstation 4 so is is the is the is the feeling that it's too soon just because the generation was so weird with COVID? I think so. I think that's why, because yeah, like like you say, when you look at the calendar dates, it makes sense for it to be appearing now. But it's still, I, I don't know if other people feel the same way, but to me, it still feels like the start of the generation, which is weird because it blatantly isn't. Um, I don't know if it's that or also because they haven't had a hell of a lot of big first party games from either side. Yeah. Um, especially from Xbox, but certainly from Sony as well, the number of big first party releases you can still probably count on one or two hands. It's not certainly not the rate they came out on PS3 and even the rate they came out on PS4. Uh, partly because games are, as we all know, are getting more expensive and take longer to make. It it does kind of feel like we're still in the early stages of this console, even though we're we're actually not. It's just it's a, it's a strange one. It's I don't know. I'll tell you what I'm still waiting for. Oh. Every now, every now and then, I look at my empty PlayStation Five box and see a little logo in the corner that says eight K. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still, wonder, I'm still wondering when that patch is coming to to, to play eight K games. I wonder. Uh, I'm going to Google this now. PS Five games that run eight K. Any of them? Um, I, I made the mistake of saying that on Twitter once, and I also got all the the, the defense force coming out saying, "I think you'll find that it just means that it supports an 8K output, not that it actually renders games at 8K." Is that also what? Do you know one game does does uh, render at 8K? If you're if you're if you're interested, The Tourist God. that still re- that it renders at 8K. Um, does it? So that that justifies putting an 8K on the box? I would say so. 8K 60 frames a second. You've got to love it. Um, but yeah, the the 8K thing's hilarious, but. For people listening to this and wondering, like, what am I expecting to pay for this? Six hundred quid is my prediction. Mm, yeah, at the very least five. It's the five, 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 fifty, six. I would say. Yeah, I think you're right. How much is the um, How much is I'll... the get in the door cost for a PS5 these days? Let me check. Because it's still 400, uh, four hundred. High high four. Three eight. Oh, three you mean eight, like nine, the basic nine. without the yeah for uh, the digital the with no bells and whistles you can get one for three eight nine nine. That's the in the door cost. So that's why I think they'll go six hundred for a pro. Yeah, although they're cheeky bastards in that there's still only a one terabyte hard drive in it. Mm. Yeah, and it's like come on. And that's what I'm hoping they'll, they'll let you take out the the, the, the SSD from the PS five and slot it, slot it into the the PS5 Pro without any kind of reformatting or shenanigans going on. That would be great because it is very easy to swap your SSD on the PS5. Um, but those those drives are still pretty expensive. Like if you're wanting if you're wanting a a PS5 Pro that's six hundred quid and then an extra couple of terabytes, that's another two hundred yeah. quid. Like it's a lot of money. Um, obviously we're in the weird position where like there's a bit of not an obligation, but we need to know what's going on. We need to be out there yeah. on the front lines. Um. And it's very likely, like we'll get one for review or whatever. But I don't know what they could pair with this to make it worth it, unless it doesn't come this year, and they drive a boatload of money up to Rockstar and say we don't want any exclusive. We're not trying to get any exclusive content, maybe GTA Online stuff, but we want the PS5 Pro boxes to be covered in GTA 6. Mm. I think yeah, I think that yeah, can do possibly. it. Possibly, it's a weird one. Um. 
I, maybe they could just bundle some of those unsold PlayStation VR tools <laughs> and, for a and cool two a, grand. Then you get a, the, future, the future of virtual reality. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough sell, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to be like the P. I don't. I need to check my numbers, but I don't think the PS4 Pro was like the be, the best selling version of the PS4. Like I think most quote unquote normal players will be happy to just buy the the stock version. This is more just for the graphics fiends who. Yeah, I'm absolutely desperately need the the very best. Um, it's not like a jump to a PS6. That's that's the kind of the the one where most people I think will hold fire. I think if you're happy enough with your PS5, um, and you're worried about the Pro coming out and being too expensive, just stick with your PS5. Um, all the games that come out between now and then are still going to work on yeah. it. Yeah. Um, all the games after it are still going to work on it until the PS6 comes out because nobody's stupid enough to kind of cut the user base and make a game that only really works on a ps5 pro that would be that would be ridiculous um so don't worry too much if you're listening to this and going i don't want a ps5 pro just stick with what you've got i would say i looking it up now apparently the ratio was seven to one as in seven normal ps5s uh, ps4 yeah. sold for every one pro so Okay, there you go. That's more than I thought. Yeah. But um, that, that there you go. I've, I've just for the people watching on video, I've literally just noticed the reflection of a doll in my TV screen, which is quite creepy. Um, <laughs> so, so just like, is this the highly deformed watched. doll that you you put the picture of the slack in? Oh no, no. This is this is uh, fully uh, featured. Okay. It's it's got um all the bits. But yeah, it's yeah, fun times. The other doll was like had, had a working rectum, mm. um, in which you feed it food, um, and then like pellets come out, like formed like feces. Mm. Um, it's very realistic. That the, the daughter loves it. Um, I'm not a fan. Why? I mean, let's not get into it. But that I, I've never understood why that was a a genre of toy that was. I mean, that stuff was kicking a ball when I was a child, and it was being advertised on Nickelodeon and all that crap. Um. It's a weird one. I think, I mean, I, I can tell now that I've had a daughter, she she loves the whole kind of nurture side of things. So I, I get the doll side of things because she loves the idea of having like wee babies that she can take care of and stuff. Mm. It's it, it's it's the fascination with bodily f- functions that I don't get. I, I don't think they need to cry or shit themselves or anything like that. But, and yet, who amongst it continues. Us, um, who amongst us doesn't have an obsession uh, with bodily functions? The the PlayStation 5 Pro will uh, support all bodily functions um, such as the need to drink your own urine because you can't uh, afford anything else. But see if this comes... Speaking of, speaking of drinking piss. Speaking of drinking piss, <laughs> um, Battlefront Classic Collection <laughs> is worse than drinking piss. Uh, um, I cannot believe how badly this has went, especially considering... On this very podcast, we were like, that's so cool. I can't believe they got the rights to do this. How exciting. Um, it has had a disastrous launch. At, on launch night, most of the servers were hidden, so only 192 players could play online out of 10,000 on PC. Uh, Chris, why did this go so wrong? As a, as a representative for Aspire, how did this go so wrong? I can only apologise on behalf of Aspire. Um, it's just a disaster, isn't it? Like, cause it especially because... And that's on PC. I'm guessing it sold well on others as well because I did a story recently on um, Sea of Thieves being in the top ten, being the number one in on the PlayStation Store's top ten pre-orders, and number two is was Star, Star Wars Battlefront mm. Collection. So um, it's not like twenty people bought this game. There's like it's it's sold a decent number by the by the looks of it, by the sounds of it. Um, and you know the kind of first impression is always the kind of the lasting one for a lot of these things. So um, it's just an awful launch. And by all accounts, it's getting better. They're, they're working on fixing, making those invisible servers appear again and stuff like that. But it was um, just absurd stuff. Yeah, it was like bad. you you saw videos of people like running through the Death Star and their characters were like pinging all over the map. And everyone was like, these matches can't end because no one can shoot anyone. Because as soon as you go to mm. shoot someone, they're at the other side of the planet. Like, yeah. Which does make it realistic if you're a stormtrooper. Yeah, true. Um, but, um, it, yeah. it was uh, the Battlefront franchise is so cursed. It's unbelievable. Those first two games, great. PS2 classics. The reboot was fine. It was like very bare bones. They didn't have a lot in it. I think Battlefront Two is now a brilliant game. Like they got there mm-hmm. eventually, 
but yeah. one of the worst launches of all time um and the amazing thing is it's another one of these ahead of its time for, for the wrong reasons situations because the stuff that was in battlefront 2 at launch isn't massively different to some of the stuff you get in modern games with it with the grinding and, and all this kind of crap all the kind of especially the kind of season pass stuff and free to play stuff it wasn't massively different um in that you don't get the heroes right away and you've got to grind for them and all this kind of stuff but because it was at the time it was so kind of wildly different from everything else that was out there it got absolutely hammered and rightly so it's just that a lot of stuff now it's it was, it's the horse armor situation again where when horse armor first came out everyone absolutely demolished it and it cost like two quid or something and nowadays we've reached the point where games like multiverses have 20 pound skins <laughs> and it, it, because it's just slowly edging forward edging forward edging forward to the point where it's like stockholm syndrome we, we, i moaned about the skins on twitter one day like some of these skins are 15 quid some are 20 quid people are we've well, also never played a free-to-play game before as if that like that, that's it's actually okay mate it's that yeah that it, it was also indicative of how seriously disney took star wars then and how mm. lax they are uh yeah. now with it now at disney care <laughs> yeah pretty much like back then it was oh no you can't have you can't have darth vader being in a silly costume you can't have uh, generations mixing together and now it's just like well yeah. we, we fucked up the ninth film so let's just do whatever we want all the time especially it's especially weird that battlefront 2 stopped development and then disney released about a million characters into canon that could work in battlefront like the mandalorian could be easily in that game yeah. like I, th- I think they'll try it again honestly i think at some point battlefront, battlefront 3 yeah i think at some point they'll try it again next up uncharted's Amy Hennig shown off her Marvel game. Amy Hennig, who was the star of Uncharted, do you remember? Um, she killed Nathan Drake mm. in the first one and then became right. um, the star. She started making I games. Sp- I spell her name wrong every single time, and you know why? Why? Because of C- Kurt Henning. Ah, okay. I write Amy Henning every single time um, and then have to re- have to correct it every single time. I, I, let so I'm, fact, I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Let known fact about uh, Amy Hennig, when she completes a game, she spits her chewing gum up in there and slaps it every single time. <laughs> just like just like Mr. Perfect used to. <laughs> she walks about the office and throws her towel above her head and um o- odd- oddly she's still managed by Bobby the Brain yeah, Heenan, oh. Which is which is awkward. The ultimate god rest him. Bob- Bobby mm. the Brain Heenan is a patron saint of this podcast. Uh, I'm Definitely. I'm sure he's a state is willing to sign off on that. Um <laughs> But Amy Hennig, she was Naughty Dog head honcho for the first three Uncharted games. There was a power struggle. A little thing called The Last of Us came out that gave uh, Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley a lot of power, and and subsequently Amy Hennig left. Uh, she's been uh, floating about for a while, but now she's shown off her new Marvel game. Uh, it's called Marvel 1943: Rise of Hydra, and they showed off a trailer running in Unreal Five. And Chris, you watched this just before the the podcast give me the graphical review you are digital foundry give me the graphical review <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the john lineman of this of this podcast um i think it looks good um like I, I'd, I'd like to see in-game footage as always before um actually getting too excited i don't doubt it's an engine because it's unreal engine 5 and like the facial animations are incredible um but i'd like to see how that translates to actual gameplay when obviously cutscenes, even if when they're in engine, can look better because uh, the developers in complete control of where the camera's looking and uh, can zoom right in on characters and, and kind of put all the resources on that. So I will wait until I see how it looks in action, but it's a very good start. Um, if it's anything like Uncharted, we don't know if, based on this trailer, we don't know if it's going to still be Uncharted style or if they're going to try something different, but um, if it looks like that and it plays a bit like uncharted it could be it could kind of undo the the avengers ill will yeah um by that like uncharted you mean captain america is going to be genocidal and kill like 500 people per level um pretty much yeah it's interesting so obviously 1943 do you know you know in the 1940s chris do you know do you know who was kicking a ball was that road warrior (laughs) (laughs) okay Road Warrior Adolf. <laughs> That's the podcast title. See if I, I was in charge of the name of the podcast. Lord, Alf- Lord Alfred Hayes, you uh, know, around in, in the 40s. Um, the following was Pinfall right, yeah, so by. Um, so do you think there'll be like 
Well, it's, it's going to be Hydra, so there won't be any Nazi stuff in it, will there? It'll be Nazi adjacent. Jingle It'll well. be very well. I mean, <laughs> Nazi adjacent. Yeah, I, I don't. Th- Sw- Swastikish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'll do like full on, full bifter Nazis, but I think they will get as close as they can with all the Hydra stuff because, um, mm. like, obviously Captain America. So Hydra, Hydra basically is a Nazi. Yeah. Uh, there's going to there's going to be comic book fans going mental at me saying. That. <laughs> no, you're the authority like, on I this. I think you'll I think you'll find Hydra and the Nazis <laughs> teamed up in issue one eight. Um, but I, I've I've always understood it to be the case that Hydra was a uh, um a metaphor for the 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 Nazis, but I, I might be totally wrong there. I believe that. Is, I mean, they they, the they often say hail Hydra. So exactly, I, th- I think they're 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 being pretty on the nose with it. I know Captain America has punched Hitler in one uh, mm. in one issue, but I don't know if that will be incorporated in this. Um, but <laughs> fingers, maybe that'll be DLC. <laughs> <laughs> it's like remember on the saboteur when you had to pay to see tits. What a game! And... Tell you, did you see the saboteur's back? Did you see Is that? It? How they like last week or the week before? Um, EA re-released a load of its old games. Like, and a lot mm-hmm. of them was like a lot of it was like the first Command and Conquer and the and early Sim City and stuff like that. But out of nowhere, it's like here's the saboteur, and like you can play them on like modern systems and stuff. And it's like so the saboteur just kind of quietly came back. But that's the thing. What a game! That's the thing. Do they have the tip pass? Because that was the problem. Because once <laughs> the servers for that went offline, that was their. If people don't remember, if people are too young to remember this, um, in the three sixty generation, EA were desperate for you to not buy pre owned games. So for your Fifas and your Maddens, it was the online pass. If you bought the game mm. new, online was free. But if you bought it pre owned, you had to pay a tenner for it. However, the saboteur doesn't have online play. But you know what it did have tits so if you didn't breasts. buy the game new you had to pay 10 quid for tits which is the golden rate i've heard but is that is that included <laughs> um i'll i'll I'm not sure don't pretend if, you didn't find out the minute I'm, that I'm you not, saw the story go i'm up. not sure i'm not i'm not sure if the nip is included but i need i need to look it up and see um i, I don't see any mention of dlc mm. so i would imagine it's um as, double dlc way as, as, oh there we go there we go um, I'm not sure if it's as the Lord intended. I'll need to uh, look a bit closer, as they say. Yeah. Uh, but what I, I mean, like, uh, outlandish nudity aside, what a game that was! I, I Very stylish. I, I remember it was, a, it was a clever, a clever idea. I love the concept of. For those not aware of it, you played as an Irishman who I seem to recall didn't have a very good Irish accent. No. Um, if if one at all. Um, and you're it's set during World War Two. And the Nazis have taken over wherever you are, and the whole game starts in black and white. And as you kind of free certain areas, the color kind of comes in. So by the end of the game, it's all in color, and it's like a very clever idea. I, was, I remember that game. I was gaslit by mag- gaming magazines of the time about that game because they had, they had such good screenshots. There were so many like, oh, there's the Eiffel Tower, and he's like sneaking around. Paris, like, yeah, it was Paris, everybody's right. smoking a million fags. Like, it's the, the fag ash is just absolutely everywhere. It's like, this is very stylish. That is a game, they'd never do it because it costs too much money. That is a game that would be treated very well by a Dead Space style remake. Like, just mm. make, you don't need to do loads to it. Just make, just make it nice and pop. I would, I would play that again. I mean, I despise Paris, but I would, I would go to, I would go to uh, Saboteur Paris. Well, anyone who heard my rant last week about Top Spin, <laughs> although I'm not a big fan of Paris either. But no, but yeah, like I kind of, like, I, I, I really fancy Unreal Engine 5 looking noir type game could be, like, astonishing, I would think. Yeah. If in the right hands with all your, uh, all your ray tracing and everything. Ray tracing? Is that, is that a, a Frenchman? He's he's a guy, Raymond ray tracing. <laughs> he, 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 the, he invented the graphics. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Amy Hennig's game is 2025. Do we think they're sticking to this? Nope. Nah, me neither. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll be late late 2025, sure. What, de- December 30th? Board. Exactly. <laughs> um, right in time for New Year. Mm. I'll be skipping the bells, skipping the Hogman A, and be playing Marvel 2020, eh, Marvel 1943 instead. This Unreal Engine 5, by the way, looks pretty looks bloody good. good. <laughs> yeah. I saw that Dune game that I went to see, Dune Awakening, that was an Unreal 5. Mm. And I pulled the mm. PR boy aside and I was like, because, you know, if you ask a PR person, they'll tell you if it's real or not. And I said, right, come on, what's the, what's the deal? And he was like, no, that's just the game with the HUD off. You'll take the piss. But apparently was it was. I, played, I played something recently for review that was Unreal Engine 5 and the environments looked amazing. Well done, bear with me. Um, 
it looked at the, the game itself was crash okay. nitro cart um <laughs> that's the one um the bouncer i can't i can't through crime was. streets of new um, york um, no, nah, I'm I'm sure I remember it later. I don't. I played something recently. It was Unreal Five, and it was visually impressive. Yeah. Um, if mechanically, that's kind of where we're at now. Like the the leaps are with the tech. Um, of that kind of style, it's kind of hard to explain yeah. to someone that doesn't care. But um, it's the thing is, and especially I've watched kind of tech demos of of it working and stuff, and it looks it. It's getting to stage where it looks difficult to um not make an environment look good <laughs> and not not to not to belittle the the efforts of environmental artists and stuff like that but um unreal engine 5 gives them so much power and so many tools that um it seems like it's it, it, although they're still an art to it and they're still challenged to it it seems easier than ever to give them the kind of the tools they need to make incredible looking i think it was robocop oh yeah so, it will have been that... because i saw robocop also and i was like mate that's looks like a fallout 3 d master no I... I think it was Robocop, because it looked incredible. Um, I need to double check, that's Unreal 5, but I think it might have been. The environments in Robocop looked astonishing. Um, but yeah, it might have been that. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's most Unreal 5 games I've seen have incredible backgrounds, but again, that that only go, that only takes you so far. The games themselves still need to, still need to, to play. Yeah, exactly. Um, Chris, exactly. why did you hack the the Apex Legends esport event this weekend, mate? Why does anyone <laughs> hack the, the Apex? Like, that's a weird story, isn't it? So, um, for um, those um, not aware, for those who never saw this on social media, because it was a laugh, um, the North American finals uh, for Apex Legends were postponed because during a match, uh, several different players were hacked. I don't hack is a catch all term. I don't know how that actually happened. Like it's it's they were hacked like it makes me picture someone on a keyboard going <laughs> um but they had aimbots turned on uh, one player could see everyone on the map and um, this and this isn't cheats that these players put on they, they were like foisted upon them um chris this was so strange mm. it's a weird one especially the videos doing the rounds there's a video of a guy you see him playing and you see in the chat at the side it starts saying hacked by whoever it was and then the guy, all of a sudden, he can see the locations of everyone through the walls. Yeah. Um, and he literally puts his hands up as if to say, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. I've been hacked, I've been hacked. <laughs> like, like, and then you see him just like quitting out and going, I love how one of the one of his like teammates is like, can you still play? As if to say, fucking take advantage <laughs> of that, mate. And he's like, yeah, 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 but, but I've been hacked and I can see everyone. And then he kind of just jumped out. Um, it's a strange one. I've never heard anything like that before, like people being hacked mid-game. Like during an, an actual esports event, I don't know how it even happens because no, like obviously it's a game that requires being online, so there's like there's there's stuff going on, but yeah, I mean it's such a shame. I I, I got to meet like quite a few of the Apex team when I was over at Respawn, and they're lovely, lovely people. And obviously, this is the absolute nightmare scenario because what are you meant yeah. to do? Like you can't as soon as one of those things happened. It completely invalidates the whole game because there's like yeah. like the integrity of it. But you should seek out these videos if you're listening to this because these guys are they just shit themselves, which you would like. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the thing. You're not you're not you're not paying you're not playing for a Mars bar and a, a couple of quid. You're you're playing for like thousands and thousands of of dollars, like tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money. And if well, you can see this guy's career disappear in front of his face, yeah, because he instantly thinks, "Oh no, this is going to look like I'm cheating here. This is going to look like I'm going to be shamed and never allowed back here for no fault of mine. It's going to look like I've tried to screw this system to try and win the game, and I'm going to look like an absolute." It's the worst thing you can be accused of as an esports man as being Pretty a much. cheat. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's a shame they're they're going to replay it. They're going to tighten their security and stuff, but it's we'll see. It's one of those they're things. Gonna, they're going to respawn. <laughs> they're going to respawn. Um, they're going to fucking sack half their employees. Um, <laughs> the thing with video games, as opposed to like physical sports, there is always the chance, even if it's not a hack, the game could just mess up. Like you mm. could just fall through the world and stuff like that. So there's yeah. always. It could just crash. Yeah. It could just crash. Yeah. There's it's, always, it's always, always stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that was this was a weird situation. Uh, when we come back, Chris, do you fancy a moan about Alone in the Dark? I'd love to. I'll have a moan about Rise of the Ronin 2. We'll see you in a moment. 
And we are back. For the avoidance of doubt, I will not be talking about Rise of the Ronin 2 that is yet to be uh, released. I will be talking about Rise of the Ronin also in a little while. But first, Chris. Chris Scallion's Alone in the Hello. Dark. <sighs> Listen, I'm, I'm a big fan of the original Alone in the Dark. Um, a lot of people forget about that when they talk about survival horror genre. They all say Resident Evil was the one that started it and it wasn't. Like Alone in the Dark predates it by a, a, a few years. And it was the first kind of first notable horror game that put poly, uh, polygonal characters in like pre-rendered environments and had them running about with set camera angles and stuff. And it was brilliant. Um, this is like the third reboot. There was one, there was that Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare on Dreamcast and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they did Alone in the Dark on the Wii and the 360, that kind of era. I, I flew to Italy, I think, to see that. Um and then and now they've done it. This is the, the kind of another attempt to reboot Alone in the Dark, and it's closest to the to the original than than all the other ones, but still totally different. So you've got Edward Carnby who and Emily, um, the name escapes me. Ravenscroft, I think. Um, the the, the characters from the first two uh, from the original game, they're back, um, and played by David Harbour and Jodie Comer. Jodie Comer decides to put an American accent on. Um, is that a good one? Or is it like, hello, it's okay. partner, I am it's, from America. It's it's not bad, it's decent, but it still feels out of place because it's set in New Orleans. Oh, sorry, New Orleans. New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans in the 20s, so there's a lot of extreme 1920s New Orleans accents. Mm. Like, I'm not even going to attempt one because it's borderline. <laughs> like, like, um, so, but you, you get, you get the gist. Um, so even though she's doing an American accent, it still sticks out because it's not a New Orleans accent. It's like a, your, your generic, um, a quote unquote American accent. If yeah. such a thing exists. Um, so she, her uncle's basically in this deserto mansion, which is, deserto? um, it's called Deserto. As a, D-E-C-E-R-T-O. As a, as a the gaming website? <laughs> no, not Dexerto. <laughs> okay. De- Deserto. Um, Deserto, uh, which, which is described as um, a home for the mentally fatigued. Well. Um, so, so, <laughs> well. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> Sign me up. Um, give, me, give me a double room booked. Um, the, so yeah, so, so her uncle was there and has gone missing. So she enlists the help of Edward Carnby who is the kind of a, a private detective, a private dick, if you will. Mm. And the two of them drive to the Deserto house to see what's going on. And when they get there, the man's disappeared and they've got to kind of explore the mansion to figure out what's going on. Um, it's, it's uh, atmospherically, it's really good. Like the, the, the environments are quite cool. It does a really clever trick where um, the, the whole gimmick is this talisman thing, which, has has got wee dials on it and when you spin it to certain numbers um in certain puzzles it brings up a um a kind of portal to another location okay which is in some guy's mind <laughs> uh, so you use your you, you do the puzzle and you go oh, looks like a um it looks like a docklands or something mm-hmm. and then you walk out the door and step into the docklands from the from the mansion you just oh that's cool dock, is it like is, seamless it's a, ah, it's seamless it's a really cool effect um but Everything else about it is, is so buggy. Um, I saw one review from another site, which I, I, I won't mention, but um, basically said we didn't incl- encounter a single glitch at any point through it. I'm like, mate, I encountered three at one point, <laughs> just in one scene. <laughs> as I don't know what's going on. Um, there's a bit where there's the, there's a bit where I just kind of went. I took three separate videos captures. You did a hand check. It's like I, you're did, I, did, I put my hands up in the air. Said, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Um, there's a bit where you know I don't want to do too many spoilers, but there's a bit when you're on a bridge, um, and you press a button to kind of lower the bridge, but the bridge doesn't move, and you're like, oh, what WTF? As the kids say, why is the bridge not moving? So you go outside, and these vines have started wrapping around the bridge. That's the the, the what's supposed to happen. But these vines were glitching like anything. They were properly flickering, and like bits were flicking out and stuff. So mm. it clearly was was messed up. And you're supposed to hack these vines with your axe. So that was that was strike one. The the vines were all over the place. Every time you hack them, they start glitching again. I was like properly terrified because like you know when some glitches, it just feels really yeah. quite creepy. I'm hacking these vines and they're like freaking out all over the place. And as it, as each vine disappears, these bat things come and attack you. So you've got to shoot them out the air. So I shot these bat things. And one of them died and landed in midair <laughs> instead of landing on the ground. So it's just like it, it went ah! and that just thump. 
in midair. I was like, okay, well, that's, that's strike two. <laughs> like, it's just going on here. And I finally completed it and went to leave the bridge. And as I walked off the bridge, it just froze and got stuck in the scenery. And I had to restart the save from the start again, mm. from the start of that bridge bit. So that was strike three. I'm like, this game, mate. And, and there's glitches all the way through it. Um, the performance stutters quite a lot. There's a bit near the end and it's kind of snowy bit where it properly goes down like five, six frames a second. Like, it's really just... I don't know why it just totally dies. Um, my Xbox died at one point halfway through it because it overheated, um, even though it's not really that tax the game. It's the first time it's ever happened to me with my Xbox. Um, the the combat's really clunky. Like it's, I've seen I've seen other reviews saying it's a good thing because it adds to the survival horror thing. You know, you always get this excuse that the old Resi games were the best because you walk move like a tank and no not thanks. Make it scary. It's no like, thanks. No. Exactly. So that's a bit annoying that the enemies aren't scary um it's just it's, there's something about it that i that i'd still like there's still a redeeming the atmosphere is good there's some scenes are like there's a bit at the end with a tree which i won't spot but it's hilarious i was like what um the but just by and large it's just it's so disappointing because it's like this game had been delayed twice already um it was made come out in october and they delayed it just before October, and the reason they gave was, oh, we, we don't want to release in such a busy uh, time. We, this is a game that you should that we want to stand on its own, and you should take the time to appreciate it. And you're like, mm, okay, we'll give them a pass for this one. Maybe for marketing reasons, they don't want mm-hmm. to release it. So okay, and then um, in December, so they, they delayed it to January, and then in December they said actually we need to push it back further to March because we don't want anyone doing crunch during um the, the festive period you're like well why are you doing crunch if it was finished if it was meant to be out in october like so i.e the october excuse was bullshit and it just wasn't ready yet um and it's finally out in march and it's still not ready like, so they, they, they delayed they it spent more. they delayed it from a busy october to a week that includes a 10 out of 10 game um <laughs> a big playstation game and a big nintendo game <laughs> yes that, that was that, that was what they did um <laughs> And it's a shame. I mean, there will be, from what I can tell on Metacritic, the scores vary from 20 to 90. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure your mileage may vary depending on your tolerance for this kind of thing. And I'm a big, I'm a big survival horror fan. Like, it's one of my favourite genres. Um, but it just it feels like an old survival horror game, but not for the good reasons. Like, a lot of the puzzles are really convoluted. Um, the, the thing with turning the dial is like happens so many times you know in like a game you're looking for a locker combination yeah. like that, and then that puzzle appears like once in a game, this happens like four or five times where you've got to get a three digit number and to, to put on this talisman thing, it's like mate that's, that's pretty boring um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's disappointing it's, it's weird if you see it me- for like a 15 quid or a tenner, go for it because you might like it but certainly not full price it's weird to me because you don't get David Harbour and Jodie Comer for cheap. So you have to assume that they thought we can get, like, we're not going to get Resident Evil 4 remake scores, but we're maybe mm. going to be, like, in, like, the your quarries of the world or something like that. Yeah. How are they? Do they are they phoning it in? Are they all right? They're okay. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing the best they can with the material they've got. Like, some of the dialogue is atrocious. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, like, Harbour's, like, believable-ish. Um, but then, like, they're not really phoning it in. But the, the the animations aren't amazing either. So, and the facial animations are okay. So, even if they're giving their best performance, you don't really, you can't really see it that well. It's not like a a, a Marvel nineteen forty three situation, <laughs> um, or or even like a what's the game recently that had amazing face? Uh, Suicide Squad. Oh yeah, it's yeah. nothing. It's nothing like that. It, it's it, it feels almost last gen in terms of facial animations and stuff. So, um, it's you don't you're not really getting the most out of them. Some of the supporting cast are abysmal. Like the 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 guy who plays her uncle is like there's, there's a bit where he's like he's struggling. He's like my head, my head, and and David Tarver's like, uh, what do you want? Do you want me to? And he suggests something like, do you, do you want? Are you suggesting that the that we we do this, then we can then we can get out of this? And he looks up and goes, Why would you give me hope? Why would you do that to me? <laughs> what oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's going on? Um so yeah, it's 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 it, it, it's very B movie in yeah. like in, in every in every sense. Like a B movie gameplay, B movie. Um Sounds like a bile of checking. bash, if you ask me. It's it's yeah, it's 
it's okay. It, 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 it's it's not. It, it was disappointing more than. I'm not angry. I'm just wait for a subscription service. Surely that'll be chucked on. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. If it's on Game Pass or PS Plus, definitely give it a go because you might you might click with it better than I did, but it just it just didn't land with me, which is a shame because I was it was one of the ones I was looking forward to most. Like I've mentioned it quite regularly on the Slack, like for the months <laughs> before it came out. I was like, that's that's my game. I'm doing alone in the dark. Yeah. And yeah, it was Oh yeah, they really wrestled that one off me. Uh, oh, I was like I was Listen, listen guys, listen guys, I'm sorry, but I insist I'm putting my foot down. You're Stop. like, you can do seminal genre changing RPG, Dragon's right. Dogma too. But... You do Dragon's Dogma, <laughs> do just lay off Edward Carnby. He's he's mine. Um but yeah. Uh... Oh well, fun times. Speaking of games that are just fine, although Emily Hartwood, that was really annoying me. What her son? Emily Hartwood. Her name was, I think it was Hartwood. <laughs> move on. Say move it, on. Say it definitively, and then go. Mm, I'm not not actually. As that soon as sure. I said it, I, I had the doubts. But move on. <laughs> Rise of the Ronin is the other, other, other big release this week. I've been playing it for a couple of weeks now. You might remember I did a preview a few weeks ago, and at that point, I was fairly high on it. I thought, you know what? based on the first couple hours this is fine it's a fairly standard open world game but it never gets beyond a fairly standard open world game essentially you are a, a titular ronin uh, and you're going through japan during the bakumatsu period which is um kind of this legendary historical period with a lot of political unrest uh, and as such you are playing as a character who can either be pro shogun or anti shogun and that dictates like the future of um, japan all that the story stuff really interesting characters fun um the combat is really good it's team ninja so they do combat but the rest of it's so fluffy man it's like it's open world it's an open world that could have been from 2015 like mm-hmm. there's shooting ranges and there's crap to collect and there's mm-hmm. a million markers on the map and there's crap we side missions like it's just this is Team Ninja's first open world game, and it feels like so they've been making this for eight years, and it really shows. It feels like they made the design doc of what an open world game was eight years ago, and mm. um, and the time since they've not they've not really felt, or maybe they can they just can like steer out of the open world malaise that is really set in. Um, and this isn't Rise of the Ronin's fault, apart from that they could maybe have not released it this week, but set against Dragon's Dogma Two, which is like a almost a uh, a dissertation on how good open world games could be if they weren't these hand holdy million icons on the map things it couldn't feel more dated if it tried um so yeah pretty pretty disappointed in that mm. one the there's a few strange little wrinkles to the combat so every mission you can do it with like ai partners um and online partners but we weren't able to do that during the review period however a lot of this combat is like soulsy so right. your ai partner is fighting this person and you're just standing behind them stabbing them to bits like it breaks the the thing as soon as that started happening thankfully you can turn that off and just play it as a single player game much better mm. much harder much more enjoyable but yes it's an interesting step i think they'll learn a lot from this experience especially because they were on a really good run i thought neo one and two were great didn't love wo long as much um but still solid but the the open world thing man it's just it feels like where we were with shooters like maybe five years after modern warfare came out where every single game was a shooter and they were all yeah. the same um yeah it's it's a bit of a, dis- a, a d- disappointing one what what's your reaction because i'm conscious of the fact that for people who buy one 70 quid game every mm-hmm. two months opening a map and seeing a billion things to do is potentially a good thing but obviously i'm always keen to highlight the different perspective we have as people who play 50 games a year get every game for free essentially it's a different it's a different kind of prospect for us when you open a map and see a million things regardless of how much you're enjoying the game what's the gut feeling there's initial weariness the the initial gut feeling is oh christ yeah but then but then but then i think i go well wait a minute what how many of these can i skip like theoretically because obviously if you like you say if you're buying a game for 70 quid and you're not likely to buy another game for like a month or so um you'll go okay cool um that that's a lot for me to do uh but even then i would imagine if if i was in that situation i'd still be going but is the is this is all is this all going to be good stuff 
or is this all are eighty percent of these just little icon things I need to walk over to collect and it's yeah. I'm not actually doing anything. On the other hand, if I'm reviewing it, I'm going, how many of these are like towers? <laughs> how many of these are how many of these are annoying things that are going to take a lot of time? Um or, or, and, and how much of it is stuff that's like side quests where you do a couple to get a feel for it for the review purposes, but you're not obliged to hundred percent complete the game, in which case fine, few this could still only be a twenty hour game uh, for review purposes and not an eighty hour one. Um, it's so yeah. It, it's it, we definitely we definitely approach these things in a different way. Um, which is why you often see a lot of games journalists saying, "What happened to the good old days of four to six hour games?" It's <laughs> <laughs> like you know, desperate. Why do you think we're all obsessed with Titanfall two? Because you could beat exactly. it in like a morning. <laughs> exactly. What a game. What a game. Um, but yeah, it's like there's value for money, but there's also um, filling a game with chaff. Um, and to, to kind of, it's a very chaffy the, game. The it's fine. Like it's it's a good. It is the is the quintessential three star game. If we were mm. explaining the VGC scale based on games, quintessential three star. It's fine. Mm. I say in the review, nothing in the game is straight up bad. It's just all kind of borderline, and the combat's yeah. a bit is is pretty good. But it's you're just rattling off the games that reminds you of as you're playing it. This is a problem with, and again, this isn't. This is just the way rating systems work. And in, in when this isn't a rant about in, in particular, but when we our score gets transferred over to Metacritic, we're entering a different rating scale there, and it, it gets skewed. So, like a three out of five for us, which by our scale is it's good, it's yeah. okay, um, gets translated to sixty percent on Metacritic, which is basically this game is one of the worst things imaginable as, as far <laughs> as far as the internet's concerned anything under 70 is like is like a death curse um especially when you give a game a two out of five like i did with alone in the dark like two out of five is two out of five is 40 this is, dis- this is disappointing you might get something out of it but which translates to 40 which is like uh, bright red on yeah the, on you should be America. ashamed of your words and deeds like exactly um so yeah a three people people if people come to a review from metacritic be aware that a 60 on VGC isn't actually that bad. It's, it's it's not run out and buy it, but it's also don't just ignore it if it appears on a, a subscription service. It's like, it's worth playing. Just maybe not for 70 quid. Eh? Yeah, it's it's fine. You've got much better to play. Um, it's it's a weird one because it's, it's, it's Team Ninja, but it's like partly funded by PlayStation Studios. And I feel like this was one that in the lead up, wasn't getting the full they weren't treating this like a spider-man or a god of war they weren't yeah. giving it both bifters it was just it was in state of plays and you're like oh this could be cool and like looking at the scores it's it's your threes and your four your out of fives it's like your threes and your fours your seven and eights out of ten there'll be people that'll get a lot out of it i famously hate days gone and that is like a game that has a weirdly high um fan base so if it comes to play if it comes to the ppp the playstation plus premium sure but also, Ghost of Tsushima does everything it does better, and it looks better, and it's on the PPP already. So, as we record this, is it's been up what thirty seven minutes? Your review has been up. Yeah. Um, have you had any abuse yet? Oh, I've had one. Uh, I'd like to read this out because it's an absolute cracker. Um, maybe, so, maybe not. Maybe not say who said it. <laughs> I don't really care to be honest, but um, the so I have a reputation around these parts because i have really enjoyed sony's recent string of games for oh, being, that reputation yeah well <laughs> I, one of many, <laughs> the many other one can't spell um, your honor <laughs> um i have a reputation for being a bit of a sony fan because i've liked a lot of their games recently and because people didn't know i wasn't a public figure in the ps3 and ps4 era when i was a hate well, I was a big sony fan but a hating ass hater on the pitch they were putting out so um this is this is uh resulted in me giving a lot of five stars to sony games i have dared well not all sony games gt7 never forget <laughs> i have dressed it god rest it god rest it in the cafe i've dared to give rise of their own in three stars and while to be fair on the tweet from vgc a lot of people are just like oh yeah uh that's a, that's a shame not surprised for is as a joke hmm. um on my tweet I've been responded to by someone who appears to be the quintessential Sony pony. 
well mid is part of your last name so this oh, review that's doesn't good, surprise actually. me yeah that's good it's pretty good as as i actually we had to stop the recording so i could bust a gut so i could slap my knee um and howl at that patter um <laughs> but no this is not this is not the gt7 situation where i was getting like dms of people going off their bones at me for saying correctly that that game is boring as fuck um mm. But yeah, it's been fun. You've been getting a lot of alone in the <laughs> what is the alone in the dark versus tennis well, or something. Am, 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 amazingly, amazingly, um, I got alone in the dark abuse because of your alleged Sony fanboy. <laughs> so, so like, I, 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 I just, I'd say the, the 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 review came out like alone in the dark two out of five, disappointing. And someone replied saying something like, "Oh well, what do you expect? You always give PlayStation games a really high score." I'm like. We talk about. I'm like, number one, that's not me. <laughs> and, and, and number two is, do we play PlayStation? Have you we ever about? reviewed a PlayStation exclusive for VGC? I did actually, and got abuse for it. Um, way back at the start, I did the remake of Medieval. Oh, that and, and that was like really didn't really didn't yeah. like it, but got abuse for not liking that because because how how could you how could you um insult the memory of a great med- the great game medieval I'm like, Mate, I love medieval. how could you how uh, could you talk shit about sir daniel fortescue, sir Dan fortescue. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like mate i, I loved medieval <laughs> see if you make it in playstation all-stars battle royale then you've made it you've, you've yeah. made it to the bit to the big show um fat the big princess, show was in that game <laughs> fat princess god rest her um but it's imagine if they brought out fat princess now isn't there an odd with I that think- title I think there's, there's an ongoing Fat Princess mobile game. Let me check. Um, what? A, how could they have got? How did they get away with that? It was it was a it was a dark time. Um, <laughs> Fat Princess fistfuls of cake on the PSP. Good game, by the way. And <laughs> the Fat Princess games were actually all right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Destructoid yeah. gave Fat Princess a, fat, a fistful of cake nine out of ten. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's the... a shame the PSP store's gone. We'll never know. I know. There's absolutely no way to get old PSP games. Um, the PlayStation has had plenty of five stars from VGC. Okay, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Um, Jim yeah. Ryan's not going to come out of retirement to beat me to death over my my mid rise of the own intake. I'm literally wearing a top with a PlayStation logo on it yeah. right this second. Um, so chill out folks with an xbox controller and a switch behind me so i have this stupid thing i paid for this 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 is the dual sense edge i don't use these flaps at all i use them as like a fidget toy i like... hate, i know I, I i that's the same i i don't use my elite 2 anymore um my, my elite 2 thing that i've got it all customized and everything i got when did they when they did the design lab i got a wee celtic themed uh, yeah, well. elite 2 it doesn't have a share button mm. So why why would you take the share button off your your premium controller? That's my favourite button. Um, <laughs> other than A, obviously, what a button, mate. Um, but I don't use it anymore. I use my Starfield controller because it doesn't have those flaps. Those flaps annoy me. Yeah. And it's got a capture button. Um, so stuff them. Stuff them. <laughs> stuff your fancy controllers, boys. In conclusion for Rise of the Ronin, stuff your fancy stuff controllers. Stuff your controller. Um, elsewhere on the site this week, uh, El Capitan, Andy Robinson, has reviewed Princess Peach Showtime. Um, Showtime. I was about to say, it's a, it's a tribute to the great Steve Borden, who's, um, <laughs> who's retired after a million years. God um, rest his career. God rest his career. His son, I put this in the Slack. Which one? The, the, the kind of emo looking one or the others oh the, surf, the, the guy who plays surfers the, thing the, the jack guy yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's a destiny youtuber so um if he wants to come on the podcast or rather you want to get your dad to come on the podcast talk, <laughs> talk about christ or whatever um <laughs> you, you can you can go ahead and do that um i think it's a not right i maybe wouldn't want to do this because his political views are really are really reflective of someone who's taken a lot of abuse to the head Stings but, are. I've, I've not, no, I've no, 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 no. He's he's just like a, oh, he, he's like a, a, a Christian kind of born again Christian, yeah, like Shawn Michaels. Yeah, kind of. Um, the Undertaker though. <laughs> Mark Calloway's me, me Mark, views. Me and Mark Calloway's uh, got some got some views on him. Yeah, it? but he will not stop podcasting. He he is like he is finding mics like Paul Bearer Aye. used to find caskets for him. It's he funny how he, it's funny on how his he mind. Went, it's funny how he went so long. Like not saying anything now, the boy won't shut up. No, no. And it's like, mate, put a fork in it. 
he's he's i mean i get it i get it you, you stay you stay gimmicked for that long you want to just talk shit eventually but i mean but the, the only the, the thing the, the highlight of sting's career for me on a personal level was we used to have a, a wcw vhs tape i believe it was starcade 89 or maybe starcade 90 mm. the one where sting fights rick flair um and at the start sting appears to thank you for purchasing this home video um and he says a line that me and my brother used to absolutely piss ourselves laughing at uh, because of the double entendre involved and being a young child you you laugh at any kind of um, yeah. sexual type humor and sting basically thanks you for purchasing the tape and then says i hope you enjoy watching it as much as i enjoyed doing it and then some people <laughs> go ah, he loves doing it um so sting that's that to me sting's never done other than being rescued by robocop in one pay-per-view that that's the two best things sting, sting it's robocop mate oh. if, if this if it was star kd89 then this is an absolutely incredible card Let, let's let's run it down opening match the Steiner brothers versus uh, Doom, which I mean, who the hell that's is the, Doom? That's the one. But well, one it was was Farouk, not one member of Doom. Um, Doom number. Oh yeah, Ron Simmons and Doom number two was uh, Franklin Reed, who went as Butch Reed. Um, but you know who one of their managers was? Woman was woman. Yeah, woman. Ooh. <laughs> woman, <laughs> woman, um, woman. So this was like a tournament show because it was Lex Luger beat Sting. That's right. It was kind of King of the Ring type thing. Yeah. Then the Road Warriors, <laughs> stars for this show, God rest them. Um, were fighting, and then you had a couple of Ric Flair matches. Good shit. Good shit, brother. Sting Do you know what else I had on VHS? And... Uh-huh. And to the, I watched it so much to the extent it got worn out, and now these days it's considered uh, an internet meme. Was the Chamber of Horrors Halloween Havoc with the electric chair in the middle. The, of the one room. that had Abdullah the Butcher in it. Yeah, yeah. I had that on VHS. I was I was well up on my Chamber of Horrors in the nineties, like long before it became internet folklore. What a match! Abdullah the Butcher gave match. multiple people uh, hepatitis by bleeding on them. Um, I think that Randy Orton's dad also did that to the Undertaker, and then when the Undertaker found out. He just went backstage and battered the life out of him and no one said anything. I mean, it seems about right. That's country justice, you know? <laughs> so, so you'd expect <laughs> from a redneck. Yeah. Bring it, Mark. Come on in the podcast <laughs> and defend yourself. <laughs> oh, before this podcast is over, we need some interaction we need to get our, Mark can we just get Can we just get a wrestler on this podcast? I think we could definitely get a wrestler. If any any wrestlers are listening, yeah, I feel like we could eventually get Austin Creed. I know people that are very good pals with Austin Creed. Mr. Austin Creed owns one of my books. Like I've I've had I've had DM conversations with Austin Creed um, to send to send my NES encyclopedia to him, and he seemed very appreciative of it. Um, Good man. So we could get. I'm sure we could get him on. We almost had. An AEW one on, didn't we? We almost had the AEW one, and then mm. CM went Punk. sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, CM Punk is the that will be my final episode. My get my my guests for the final episode will be CM Punk and uh, my wee Doug player. Anyway, until <laughs> next week, uh, where we will be joined by a very favourite guest of mine. You know him. You love him. He is the actor. He's, he's, he will he's, be one, back. he's one member of the Road Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Road Warrior ad, actor will be back um, to talk all things, whatever pish he's been auditioning for. Um, and we have games that we can talk about next week, don't we, Chris? Eh? Give, give, we them, give, give them a, a really good hint about what it is. Um, South Park. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We can talk about South Park next week. Until then, questions, comments, and concerns, the podcast at videogameschronicle.com. T shirt consideration provided by Gambit Gaming. Check them out, VGC at checkout for a discount. Follow Chris on Twitter at Scully1888. Me on Twitter at Jordan Medler. Thank you to the great Grant Kirkhope, who, when he wrote this podcast theme, I knew he would imagine it uh, being used on a podcast that talked quite so much about 80s WCW. What you got going on for the rest of the week, Chris? Um, continue to play the game I, I very vaguely hinted about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then playing another game. And also a VR game. I'm being very vague here because I've not, I can't, I've not checked embargoes for other things. That but, VR um, game you're playing, I'm also going to 
uh, moan at them to play that VR game that because you, cool. you 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 played it on a previous format, didn't you? I did a dead format. <laughs> <laughs> God rest it. God the, the, rest the it. The Atari Lynx. The Atari um, but, Lynx VR. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've, I'm I'm spinning plates. But, um, yeah. Spinning plates and shagging eights. It's VGC, the video game <laughs> podcast. Until next week, say goodbye, Chris. Goodbye, Chris. And we'll see you next week.